ओम अज्ञानतिरांधस्ञानाजनशलाकया चक्षुन्मील येना तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपादा कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति भक्तिवेदातस्वामी नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर In this session, we'll be discussing from the thirty-third verse of the nineteenth chapter of the first canto of Shrimad Bhagavatam. Yesham samsmaranat pumsam sadya shudhyanti vai grhaha kim punar darshanas parsha pada shoucha asana dibhi. The meaning of this verse is simply by our remembering you. our houses become instantly sanctified and what to speak of seeing you touching you washing your holy feet and offering you a seat in our home this is parikshit speaking to shukadev goswami addressing shukadev goswami that the spiritual potency of a your devotee who is completely immersed in krishna consciousness is so great simply by remembering him one's house becomes one's surroundings one's place becomes completely sanctified instantaneously in what we sanctified all the material influences are negative influences are nullified just by remembering a saintly person like shukadev goswami and then if one is more fortunate one is able to not only remember him but even see him uh, touch his holy feet wash his feet and give him a seat of honor and serve him by hearing from him worshiping him taking his instructions etc so uh, shrila prabhupada explains in the purport the importance of holy places of pilgrimage is due to the presence of great sages and saints what is the Uh, why is a place called a holy place of pilgrimage it is uh, primarily because in that place great saintly persons are present and by their presence what happens to that holy place that's explained by shri la prabhupada in the next uh, sentence on this purport prabhupada says It is said that sinful persons go to holy places and leave their sins there to accumulate. Anybody goes to holy place, ordinary people, they will take a bath there, and they will leave behind their sinful reactions. They get purified. They get purified means their sinful reactions are washed away by going there and taking a bath in the holy place. But the presence of the great saints in such holy places disinfects the accumulated sins now so many people go to holy place ordinary people big numbers they go and they leave behind all their sinful reactions now those sinful reactions become a burden a big burden in the holy place but that burden is cleared away by the presence mere presence of the saintly persons like shukadev goswami and 
because of the presence of the saintly persons in such holy places, the holy places continue to remain sanctified by the grace of the devotees and saints present there. See, this is not known to many people. This is explained in another place in the Bhagavatam. So, Prabhupada is quoting from that portion of the Bhagavatam that uh, a holy place becomes um, burdened by sinful reactions of those ordinary people who visit the holy place and wash away their sinful reactions. But such accumulated sin is cleansed away by the presence of saintly persons. Now, further Srila Prabhupada says, if such saints appear in the homes of worldly people, certainly the accumulated sins of such, such worldly enjoyers becomes neutralized. Home also, people are staying, ordinary people stay in their home, but generally they are inclined to enjoy materially and thereby accumulate some sinful reactions. Now, if such a home is visited by a saintly person like Shukadeva Goswami, then again, the home becomes completely purified. Home becomes completely purified. That's what Shukadeva Goswami, Parikshit Maharaj is telling Shukadeva Goswami. Therefore, Prabhupada says further, the holy saints actually have no self-interest with the householders. That means when a saintly person visits a home of an ordinary person, a worldly uh, person, then the saint has nothing to get for himself from the householder. Don't mistakenly think that when saints come to your house, Genuine saints, I am talking about genuine saints. They come to your house. It is not that they want some bhiksha. They want some benefit from you. They want to take something from you. No, it is never. They have no self-interest. The only aim of such saints is to sanctify the houses of the householders. Only aim. To purify their house, to make their house uh, free from sinful reactions so that it will benefit them to practice spiritual life and make spiritual advancement. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada says further, the householders should feel grateful when such saints and sages appear at their doors. So, when a saintly person comes to the door uh, of a householder, householder should welcome them and take spiritual benefit from their presence. A householder who dishonors such holy orders is a great offender. It is an offense to um, uh, not honor such a saintly person. It is enjoined, therefore, that a householder who does not bow down before a saint at once must undergo fasting for the day in order to neutralize the great offense. So, <clears throat> the Bhagavatam says in the 10th canto, Yasyatma buddhi kuna petri dhatu ke swadhi kalatra di shubhauma ijadhihi yatirta buddhis salilena karhichit janeshu abhigneshu sa eva go karaha. This is a very strong verse, a strongly worded verse. It is spoken by Krishna in the 10th canto in an assembly of saintly persons at uh, Kurukshetra, when there was solar eclipse, there was a gathering of saintly persons on that occasion and Krishna was speaking to the saintly persons. 
Krishna had gone there as the king of Dwaraka. Krishna is playing that role uh, in his pastimes, in his Leela. Uh, Dwaraka Adhisha, the king of Dwaraka. Um, so Krishna is telling a human being who identifies this body, this material body, made up of three elements with his self, Yesya Atma Buddhi. Who am I? Actually, most people think I am this body, this body. This body is who I am, is myself. But Shastra says no, scripture says no, Bhagavad Gita says no, this body is not you, you are not the body, you are spirit soul. So, what if a person in ignorance, mistaken uh, identity that I am this body and what is this body made of? It is described here kunape tridhatuke. Kunape means a bag consisting of three dhatus, three elements. What are the three elements? According to Ayurveda, this body is made up of kapha, vata and pitta. Kapha is uh, mucus, vata is air and uh, pitta is bile. So, somebody who thinks this bag called the material body, uh, which consists of three elements, somebody thinks this as the self. And further, Swadhi Kalatra Adishu, who considers the byproducts of the body to be his kinsmen. That means my wife, my children, they are all mine. Who considers his land of birth worshipable? Bhauma Ijadhihi. They give a lot of importance. I have taken birth, let us say, in Mysore. So, Mysore is very, very, very important place for me. And Yatirtha uh, Buddhi Salile. And he thinks. Such a person, a materialistic person, an ignorant person, a foolish person, a person under the influence of the illusory energy thinks that one should go to a place of pilgrimage simply to take a bath so that all my sins are washed away. I do not have to suffer any sinful reaction. I can enjoy without any hindrance. If this attitude a person has, such a person is considered saha eva gokharaha. He is no better than an animal like a ass or a cow. Karaha means ass and go means cow. That means he is um, not a human being with developed intelligence. He is acting on the platform of the animals, on the bodily platform. Everywhere in the scriptures this is said, human beings should not remain on the bodily platform, on the material platform, on the um, uh, platform of uh, material enjoyment. No. Human life gives us an opportunity to uh, rise to the spiritual platform and act on the spiritual platform to gain complete freedom from material bondage and go back to Godhead. So, uh, this verse says, Yat tirtha buddhi salile na karhichi janeshu abhigneshu One should go to a place of pilgrimage, not merely to take a bath and become cleansed of sinful reactions, but to meet saintly persons whose mere presence or whose just audience will completely purify you. You don't have to separately take a bath there. Of course, nothing wrong in taking a bath, but no need. Rather, you would meet a saintly person by meeting whom you can not only become purified, but you can get some instructions for uh, 
uh, practicing spiritual life and uh, making spiritual advancement and going back to Godhead. So that is what is uh, uh, explained in this verse by uh, of the Bhagavatam in the 10th canto. So I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.